There are a record-breaking number of women running for office this campaign season. The majority are Democrats, many driven by opposition to the Trump presidency. But more Republican women are running as well. We decided to follow one who's running for state Senate in the very red state of Indiana. It's a local race, but as Megan Thompson finds, it reflects a divided Republican Party and a divided nation. Oh, I can see him. He's working in the kitchen. My name's Corey Meyer. I'm running for state Senate. Uh -huh. On a I'm recent cold and rainy Friday. afternoon, Corey Meyer walked door to door in Zionsville, a suburb of Indianapolis. I'm a first time candidate. I'm a small business owner. Meyer is an urban planner and runs a consulting business. She's worked in city government, but has never held elected office. I want to focus the policies that I work on, on workforce and economic legislation. Meyer wants a seat in the Indiana State Senate, which will decide the state budget next year and could reform the way congressional districts are drawn. She's running in the May 8th Republican primary against Mike Delf, a 12-year incumbent who's never had a primary challenge. Meyer says knocking on doors is her favorite part of campaigning. Great. I'd love to have your support on May 8th. That sounds cool. Thanks for coming by in the rain. Yeah, no problem. All right? Good yeah, luck. Yeah, thank you. It's <laughs> good right. to see you. All right. Thanks. You are a Republican challenging a Republican incumbent. Yeah. Why did you decide to run? I got frustrated with our age of turbulent politics, and I decided that I was a gonna get in the game. We will leave them a note saying, sorry to miss you. Meyer is one of 75 women running for the Indiana State Legislature, double the number of four years ago. As in the rest of the country, this surge of women is mostly on the Democratic side, but the number of Republican women running here is up too, 23 compared to 15 in 2014. We're fortunate to have five of our seven statewide offices held by women, Republican women. GOP strategist Jennifer Hallowell says it's a point of pride that Republican women hold so many state offices here. Lieutenant Governor, Auditor, Secretary of State, Treasurer, and School Superintendent. Also, the two women who uh, serve Indiana in the congressional delegation are Republican women. And so we're well represented in a lot of ways, but we need to keep striving for more women to run for office. So what motivates Republican women to run for office? I think that women are motivated by issues similar to men. You know, it's whether it's taxes or um, the economy, jobs. But I reject this whole notion of women's issues because every issue is a woman's issue. Similarly, Corey Meyer, a 40-year-old mother of two, says she doesn't feel the need to emphasize the fact that she's a woman when she's campaigning door to door. I figure my face would tell them that. <laughs> but believe it or not, um, they bring it up to me. I have had 70-year-old uh, men uh, say to me, you're a woman, the women are going to make the difference, they're going to create change, and I'll vote for you because you are a woman. So while I don't necessarily carry that banner, the voters are carrying that banner. Why? Don't you necessarily carry that banner? Because I, I'm qualified for this position. And I think that uh, regardless of my gender, I know that I can succeed. Laura Wilson is an assistant professor of political science at the University of Indianapolis. The gendered aspect, especially for the more conservative women, isn't going to play the same kind of role that it would elsewhere or certainly for a more liberal woman. And really with voters, I'm not sure that that would really resonate with your average Hoosier voter. With the Republican primary just a few weeks away, Corey Meyer is focused on raising money. She spends several hours a week making calls with the help of a professional fundraiser. How much do I ask him for? 500. Hi, Nate. This is Corey Meyer calling. Would you consider supporting the campaign at $500? There are no polls on this local race, but Meyer's picked up some big endorsements. Two firefighters unions, the district's four Republican mayors, and the Indianapolis Chamber of Commerce all support her. And she's attending fundraisers across the district, which covers a portion of Indianapolis and its suburbs. Hi, Corey Meyer. Nice to see you. Corey Meyer, very nice to meet you. Can we put a sign in your yard? I'd be happy to do that. All right. About 30 supporters gathered recently at this fundraiser in Carmel, where Meyer lives, to hand over checks and hear her pitch. 
I am running for effective workforce and economic legislation. As of the last campaign finance filing in January, Meyer's opponent had $200,000 on hand. Meyer had $60,000, but says she's doubled that since. Her opponent, Mike Delf, is a lawyer and a major in the Army Reserve. He's developed a reputation in the local media as a socially conservative and sometimes controversial Republican. He's known for a bill to crack down on illegal immigration, aspects of which some in his own party opposed. And he pushed contentious bills requiring abortion doctors to tell women that life begins at conception and a fetus may feel pain. In 2014, Delf led a controversial fight to ban gay marriage in Indiana. When the bill didn't pass, he launched an overnight Twitter barrage that made headlines. In a statement to NewsHour Weekend, Delf said his focus has always been to apply conservative principles to his work. He highlighted his work to cap property taxes, pass an income tax cut, and an initiative to raise money for veterans. And he said he's taking his primary challenge very seriously. Well, I'll just close with one question that I get a lot is, uh, what makes you different? You know, how are you different from Senator Delf? Corey Meyer doesn't attack her opponent on the issues, but she does draw a contrast. I would use three words to differentiate myself. Effectiveness, collaboration, that's just in my soul, and then inclusion. And Meyer is pointedly not focusing on the hot-button social issues that have been divisive in Indiana and across the nation. In her literature, she touts herself as a pro-life conservative, but... My focus is really going to be around business issues, and it will not focus on abortion. She's a strong supporter of the Second Amendment, but... There's a balance between having the right to own the gun and um, creating a safe environment and she's turned off by efforts to ban gay marriage. I think that um, our obligation as a society to is to love on each other and not to place judgment. This isn't surprising to Professor Laura Wilson. She says while well, Republican women fall all along the philosophical spectrum, for many, social issues aren't what drives them. A number of them you know, really do stand in the more moderate wings of the Republican Party, and I, I see them as kind of the new, the new Republicans. Um, where they, they may have been involved in the party for a really long time, but they're looking at economic, fiscal responsibility. Wilson says gender aside, the Mike Delf Corey Meyer race is also a case study of the wider battle within the Republican Party between its more conservative and moderate wings. Where you have someone like Delf who's more extreme, um, more outspoken within the party, even in Indiana, and then you have someone like Meyer who's, you know, a new voice. Yet another issue at play here? President Trump lost this district in 2016. All across the nation, Democrats are targeting Republican incumbents in moderate districts like this, looking to pick up seats in both the U.S. House and state legislatures. GOP insiders in Indiana fear that if the more moderate Cory Meyer loses the primary, this seat could flip Democratic in November. That's a good boy. So how do Republican candidates talk about President Trump and districts he lost? It turns out, not easily. Hi, my name's Corey Meyer. I'm running for state senate. You are? So are yeah. you a Trump supporter? I believe, well, I respect Mr. Trump. He's our president. Are you a Trump supporter? Well, he's done a lot of good things. He's done our so business. Are you a Trump supporter? <laughs> Oh, what? Okay. Yes, I like the policies. No, I don't like his. No, I don't like his Twitter. You don't like his manner. I don't. Yes. But you I like the results. Yes. While Meyer's negotiating her public position on Trump, she's also personally yes. conflicted. On one hand, there are all the issues with women, from the alleged affairs to the Access Hollywood tape. How do you view all that? That is disturbing to me as a woman. I wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of that type of behavior. But there's a lot and she I likes too. That. I think that he's made some strong business decisions for the United States. I think that he's taken a hard stance on North Korea. That's probably a great decision. North and Korea she took a lesson go. from his improbable win. He was a candidate that had never run for office before, and he won. He bucked the system. Well, i got to give you credit. Anybody come out on a lousy day like this <laughs> deserves to be voted for. And so Meyer continues going door to door asking for votes. You can count him as a vote hoping she, too, can buck the system. See you later, buddy.